Welcome to Six Gun Guitars, Luthi Lessons video series. Uh, we're going to talk about arching the braces on the soundboard in the back right now. Um, I made a lot of my original guitars, the first few, with a flat top and a flat back. And the reason I did that was just because it seemed like it was going to be a pain to arch all those pieces and get it all together and then try to assemble it. It's actually a lot easier than it sounds. Um, and it sounds a lot better because what happens is when you dome the top and you dome the back, especially on the back, you're going to increase the interior volume, which is going to help with your tone and your warmth. But you're also on the top, instead of the soundboard depressing down like this, you know, over, over the vibrations and kind of up and down in the middle, now you have it a little, and this is exaggerated, but now you have a little bit more of a dome shape. And it's going to spread those forces out and it's going to press down really good and it's going to give its own natural, um, almost its own natural springiness, you know, kind of to the, to the whole vibration thing for vibrating your soundboard. And it does create a better sound. Um, arching it's really easy, you just need to get yourself a couple arching templates. I'm going to show you how to make those, and I'll show you how to arch some braces. You either need to use a go deck, or you need to clamp the braces on the guitar a little bit differently than you would with just laying them on and, and squishing them down flat. Um, I usually use a lot of cam clamps, and I'll lay my soundboard out, I'll lay the braces out, whichever ones I'm gluing, and then I'll actually pinch them. What happens when you pinch them is you force the soundboard to take the curvature of the braces because the braces aren't going to bend, the soundboard is. So it forces it to take the curvature, so clamping and gluing and all that stuff really isn't that much more of an issue as long as you have some cam clamps. But um, I'll take you over and I'll show you how to make that arching template and kind of go from there and we'll put an arch on the back of a brace where you show you how easy that is. And then you should be able to arch all your braces in the future and you will get a lot better results from it. Okay, this is the arching template that I've got. Um, I made this and I'll show you how to do that really quickly here. But this is a quarter inch offset over a 16 inch span, which is what I wanted for the back. So I wanted about a quarter inch of bump, you know, kind of in the middle for that to pop out. Um, on a back, you can get pretty liberal. You can go up about as, you know, up as, even as much as a half if you really want to, to increase that interior volume and, and really give a nice dome to the back. I really think having a nice dome on the back of the guitar looks nice. But this is the template I made. And all I did was I took a piece of wood, and we'll just use this fretboard cut off as an example. It was 16 inches wide. And it was 16 inches wide, and all I do is actually we'll do the line first. What you're going to want to do is just draw a line down the board pretty close to the top. And let's go ahead and draw it across nice and straight. Now you got the line on there. So you draw your line on there, and at the end of either line, you want to go ahead and drill, drill in a screw. Now you can do this with a nail, um, you can do this with a couple of tacks, you know, there's, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. I just think the screws are fast and easy. So I've got these two screws in here. Now I'm going to line these guys, this guy up on here so that way the line on here hits the back of the screw. So it's actually on this side of the screw. If it's up this high, you're not going to get a correct measurement. So you want the line hitting the bottoms of the screws on either side. So right now, if I were to put this ruler on my line, it's actually going to touch the back of the screws all the way across. And it, and it does. And I can actually look over and check that. My line is good. Now what you want to do is find the center. And this is about 16 inches. It's an 8 inch center. And because I want a quarter inch of deflection, I want to measure up a quarter of an inch. Go ahead and mark that. And now what you need to do, and I actually don't have it over here, so I'm going to run and grab it. Um, you need to take a metal ruler, take a piece of guitar, um, guitar binding, which is what I'm going to do. Um, take anything that's long and flexible. Um, and you actually want something that flexes evenly. So sometimes guitar binding isn't the best, but this stuff's cut pretty clean, so it should be good. So what you want to do now is lay that guitar binding nice and upright here, right on your line. And then you want to give it a little push forward. You want to push it forward until it reaches that quarter inch mark that you put on there. So now I've got that up. I'm checking my corners just to make sure that my line is good. I'm going to bend my screw just a bit to make sure that it comes back in right. But you get your bend, and once you've got your bend in there, you come across with your pencil on the other side, and go kind of light so you don't mess the bend up. 
but go ahead and draw your curve in on the other side. And you might be able to see that, but you get it drawn on there. And now you've got this nice graceful curve that goes from the end point all the way up to your quarter and nice and evenly down to your other end point. And again, that might be a little difficult to see, but we can get it on there as best we can. And I'll do this really quick from this side, just so you can see it again a little bit easier. Line it up so the lines are on the bottom of the screws. Put your piece on here. It's nice and lined up straight. Push it out to the quarter inch mark. And then just come along and put yourself a nice good mark on there that you can cut to. Now what you're going to want to do to get this thing rounded off is just clamp it down and come along with, I would use a saw to take off the majority of it and then go ahead and come back with either um, a black plane, come back with um, a piece of sandpaper or a scraper, um, sandpaper wrapped around a nice square block and come back and just kind of go back and forth and refine this curve so that way it's a hundred percent matching to the line because you're going to use this to make all your braces from now on so everything that's made out of this is going to look just like this so take your time on this one, make it look good, and you won't have to worry about your braces being bad in the future. So that's that. I've already made one of these. I just made this out of 8th inch MDF. You can really make it out of whatever you want. I poked a little hole in the top so I can hang it on the pegboard. Just makes life a little easier with all the stuff you've got, especially I'm working in a single car garage. So let me get these screws out of the way. And yes, I screwed these directly into my bench top. This thing is free floating. There's only a couple of bolts in it. I designed it so that way once it gets destroyed, I can take it off, put another piece of three quarter inch plywood on here. I got a brand new bench top. But I'm going to take my template now and come over to a brace. This is just a piece of Douglas fir. I'm going to come over to my brace. First thing I'm going to do is mark the center. I've got the center also marked on my template. So now what you're going to want to do is line this guy up to the center, get the center mark right, and then line it up on the ends so you've got an equal amount of deflection on both ends. You don't want to have it all one-sided. So get it on there, line it up with the center, go ahead and make a mark. Now that is going to be the mark that I come down to when I use my plane. So now I set it right here on the bench. And you can do four of these at a time if you want. It really doesn't matter. I, I'm going to do this one one, just one at a time here. But clamp the one end down so you can work on the far side. I'm going to use a small plane. And just kind of come up and plane down to the line trying to pay attention to keep your plane nice and square because this is going to be the part that's against the sound where you want that to be nice and square. So I'm going to come over and nice and easily you want to do kind of long even strokes if you can. It's hard up here because you're right near the line but you want to do about as long of a stroke as you possibly can so that we don't carve any divots in there that you have to chase down later. Now near the end you'll have to do some short ones to remove the mats. Pull out your shavings there. Just keep on working yourself down to that line. And once you get down to it, you can pop out and kind of take a look. Now I've got a little bit of a bump here that I can kind of work out, but I do have a nice curve that's imparted on there. And then what you can do is go ahead and turn it around, or actually it's best for you to flip around because the marks are on the same side. So you flip it around, clamp it in again, and then come back, and obviously doing this from the other side just because you know, stand in front of the camera here. But you bring down your other end, Bring down your other end to match. I'm not going to do this whole thing. This is making a long video, but you bring down your other end to match. 
check it, check it against your template, and the one side we did does look pretty good. Check it against your template, and then proceed to the rest of them. And the last thing that you'll want to do is take all of the ones that you've made, and go ahead and line them up next to each other, clamp them all down together, and then do a final bit of planing with all of them together so that we have the exact same profile. And again, you can check them up against your template and make sure that they're right. But once you have a nice, once you have a nice couple of curved, curved pieces, you'll be able to clamp it to the guitar. And again, the way that I do this is if this is my soundboard blank, I'll put this on here like this, and I'll clamp the one end down here. And when you clamp the other end down, it forces, it forces it to take the curve. So when you put it on there, you just kind of clamp, you pinch, 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 and whatever curve is on here, it's going to force that soundboard or force that back around it to take the curve. And it takes a little bit longer to glue that way. It does monopolize a lot of clamps. I mean, you probably use 20 clamps when you're doing it. But it's a great and easy way to get a little bit more tone, a little bit more warmth, a little bit more volume, a little bit more sound out of your acoustic guitar versus going with a completely flat, dead top and back. Um, if you have any questions on the templates, again, these, uh, this one just happens to be a quarter inch offset over 16 inches. You can go up to a half, you can go as little as an eighth. Um, the top, I think mine is an eighth inch over 16 inches or an eighth inch over 20 inches, something like that. But these can also be found online. You can find basic arching you know, kind of requirements. And you just do it the same way. Whatever the length is, put your pins at the end, mark your offset off the straight line, bend to something, make the curve and make the template. Like I said, take your time on the template. Make sure that it comes out nice because everything you make is going to be from this template. Um, you don't have to plane them. You can sand them. You can, you can cut most of it on a bandsaw if you want to and then sand it. There's a lot of different ways to carve these out. Um, the plane is pretty quick, though it does take a little bit to get the hang up. But again, if you have any questions about arching templates, just shoot me an email at sixgunguitars at gmail.com. That's sixgunguitars at gmail.com. And I'll go ahead and answer everything that I can for you.